In the desert country of Namibia, an unlikely fashion movement is amassing growing interest. Laurentius Gebart, or Lou the Vintage Guru, as he is known, is a leading figure in the so-called Afro-Dandy movement. The more you look good, the more people will take you seriously. Together with his friends, he searches out second-hand pieces of clothing, remolding them into bold and exciting new vintage fashion statements. Yeah. In Africa, for the African. Lou is putting African fashion on the map, but he also has a deeper purpose, to make style and dignity accessible to the poor. We have a slogan that says, Rest cheap, look rich. Vintuk, the capital of Namibia, is nestled amongst the rolling hills of the Comas Highland Plateau. It is a small, isolated city that lies at the heart of one of the most sparsely populated countries on the continent. It may not be a place from where one would expect a dynamic new fashion movement to arise, but at a home in the working class area of Katatura, a group of friends is getting dressed for an unusual photo shoot. Shades of pink today. I'm known as Lux the Vintage Guru. I'm born and raised in Vintuk, and I am an auditor or a professional accountant by qualification and by profession. More so than for most people, dressing well is an essential part of Lou's life philosophy. The more you look good, the more people will take you seriously. It is the discipline, not only within yourself, but you want this discipline to get out so that they can see that you are, you are, you are a well-mannered person, you are a smart guy, you dress smart, you look good. We wear suits every day. As much as you're wearing your denim or track suits at home, we wear our suits, we wear our formal shirts. It is our lifestyle. We have a slogan that says, dress cheap, look rich. Lou is a leading figure in the so-called Afro-Dandy movement, a fresh African take on vintage fashion. Its members are like-minded individuals from around the continent who are inspired by the suit-wearing gentlemen of bygone eras, dressing up and sharing photographs across various social media platforms. Today, he and his photographer friend Lucas, followed by two fellow Afro-Dandies, Noko and Ahmed, travel to Dobra, a small mission school outside Vintuk to take some photos there. En route, they stop at an overpass for the first set of photographs. something very, very different and very unique. And I said to myself, why don't I be unique? I'm in Namibia, I'm in Southern Africa. Why don't I create this concept and see if I can inspire my fellow Africans so that they can wear the same style? Ah, guys, 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 guys. Yo, this is amazing. This guy did us. Justice. The group arrives at Dobra, where the school children are having a day off. Lou goes to greet the wife of his cousin, who lives and works on the property. Lou himself hails from a poor background. 
Part of his mission as ambassador of the Afro-Dandy movement is to include the living spaces of ordinary African people in the fashion photographs he shares around the world. They should see where we come from, right? They see where we live, but they still see we look good. What they wear in Europe or wherever is what we can also portray in Africa. You guys, give me one here. Yeah, just like that, like the other one. Yeah, like that. Wait. Try now. Yeah, what is your? Volvo V70, vintage barber. <laughs> I'm taking details now. OK, change my. Yeah. You know, I come from a very tough oh. background. My mom was selling food as a living, like in Namibia, we, we say selling kapana. And my dad was working for a local butchery. Their salaries were not of a high class, so it was a struggle. I always said to myself, I need to work very hard so that I can plow back and, and help them one day. Lou's parents, despite their difficult circumstances, instilled in him a lifelong belief in the importance of looking smart and maintaining self-respect. Today you are smiling too much, man. I'm excited, man. You do mind you just smile? I'm going somewhere, man. <laughs> my grandfather, my late grandfather, his shoes will always be shiny, he's always wearing a tie and stuff, you know. And, and he always told me, you should always try to always look smart, try to always look well-dressed. Um, because you, you gain dignity, you gain respect from individuals. So from the age of, uh, if I can remember nine, we were wearing suits. The guys pose for some final shots outside the old mission church before heading back home and sharing their photos around the world. Back in Vintuk, Lou and his friends gather at his house to end off a successful day. They've already changed into new outfits. Guys, are you eating or are you praying? Yes. Even yeah, when we are kitchen. busy cooking in the kitchen. He's, he's wearing like that in the kitchen. We, we, we wear suits. When you cook for me. I think the only time I don't wear suits is when I wear my pajamas to, to go to bed or when I go to a place called Kapana, where they sell nice beef meat, you know? Because of the smoke, I can't go there with a suit. Time to, <sighs> time to eat. Let's eat that. Nice. Nice. Well done, man. Nice. Downtown Vintuk is packed with regular clothing chain stores. What I've seen with Namibians is they like looking good, they like looking smart, but they are more into ready-to-wear garments. For those who cannot afford to shop in these shops, there's also the option of second-hand markets in places like Katatura. Lou's own mission is to help restore dignity to people who have little money. This is one of the reasons why, after starting with clothing design, he moved to restyling. To look good doesn't necessarily mean you need to have money. It doesn't mean you need to come from a very rich background. I am from a poor background and I still look elegant. I strategize my ways. It depends on yourself, confidence and awareness. Do I want to look good, you understand? And I always tell people, you don't need to dress up to impress other people. You, you dress to please yourself. You don't dress to please other people. By shopping carefully, Lou has amassed a remarkable clothing collection. He has integrated new items with several suits inherited from his grandfather. I have about plus minus 80 pairs of shoes, of which 90% are formal shoes, because I'm a formal guy. I have about 80 plus ties, 50 plus suits, inclusive blazers and whatnot. My friends in Johannesburg, they gave me the name Vintage Guru. You will notice that all my trousers are turned up. Sort of a dandy style, but it originated from the a uh, Italians and the Asians. Dandy men or stylish men, we don't wear belts. 
you wait the suspenders to hold your pants up. You can wear a floral tie with any type of suit, any color suit, you know. When you are even late and just grab it and go. Yeah, you see the tie knot. This is this is a, a dandy tie knot, not a married man tie knot. Married man tie knot is those thick ones there. An important part of Lou's fashion endeavor is to post photos of his outfits on social media every day. I always post and say, today I'm wearing a vintage tie. And then I'll give a description of the tie, the history of the tie, all those things. So I'm educating people. I want them to know and learn how to dress. Ready to face the day. Katutura is where the lower class and a bit of middle class people live. Where I stay is where my dad used to live, you know, and I bought my house from him, so the house is sentimental to me, so I am proud to be staying in Katutura. It's a pity my dad is no more, but for my mom, I need to ensure that everything she wants in this life, I attend to that, because I need to pay back. My parents knew that, you no, know, you need to bring bread and butter home. And I'm glad they, they said, no, you can go do fashion only when you go do accounting. After completing his initial studies, Lou found employment in a company working in the mining sector. I started off as junior accountant, and, and I worked myself up into being an accountant, later on moving to internal auditing, and then at the same time I said to myself, okay, now I have the experience, let me see if I can combine this experience with educational experience. Now I'm doing a postgraduate in informatics. I need to push, man. At least I must be called a doctor, man. You know, education has no limit. I'm gonna continue as much as I can. My phone is always in front of me, so Instagram is on standby. I don't know Penny, but I see these comments of my people that makes my day go make us proud, twice as nice, and God good. It's needed. It's needed, it's needed. Part of the importance Lou attaches to education also involves passing skills onto the younger generation. Apart from training young entrepreneurs, he also coaches his aspirant Afro dandy friends in styling and dressing. Back at home, he gives a lesson to his friend and disciple, Noku Hamakuja. Let's dress this client. So I'll ask you to put on the tie so I can show you where you are doing mistakes. Very good. I got inspired and I started telling him that, man, I like your style and I really want to learn something from you. We started, he started mentoring me and all that. Just from friends, we became best friends. From best friends, we became brothers. Being a Dante man, it gives you that self-respect. I'm, I'm not only representing my community, I'm representing the whole country as a whole. And I like it when they call me Dandy man. Like my mom, she always say, hey, Dandy man. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm a Dandy man. This is my lifestyle. I wear like this from Monday to Sunday. So this is how I look. This is a perfect outfit for someone who doesn't like too much details. Mm -hmm. But then you find people like me and you yeah. who like striking out, mm -hmm. you know, the details and stuff. Yeah. Who will then have to take additional pocket square and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So he's getting there, you understand? He's eager to learn. And I can see the way he dresses up now. It's like he went to fashion school. He's learning very, very fast. Go and get a pocket square that will fit this outfit. I have a bachelor degree, but he's still f pushing me to, to study further. It's killing, brah. It's killing. I'm so thankful that I, I met Lou because I've learned so many things from him. And I'm still continuing learning from him. Sure. Nice, man. Uh, yeah. Central to Lou's plans to put Africa on the map is getting him and his friends to attend Piti Umo, the biggest men's fashion event in the world, taking place twice a year in Florence, Italy. The biggest excitement is to meet my mentors. 
They have their own fashion houses, people producing suits for them. These are big guys, you know. I want to go speak to these guys. The next edition will happen in three weeks' time, and Lou has much preparation to do. We're going there to get the skills, the things they do, how they do it, to come back to Africa and implement. That's pity for you. Two weeks before leaving for Florence, Lou travels to Johannesburg in neighboring South Africa in order to source some more outfits. Johannesburg is not only the place where he finds most of his secondhand clothes, but also where he has a collection of kindred Afro dandy spirits. Yeah, at last, man. At last, we're shooting together. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You guys have the right style, bro. Look at this, man. The floor uh, like time. Like <laughs> <laughs> bruh, you're killing this trench coat, bruh. Oh, bruh. This thanks, is a matter of trench coat, <laughs> You know, inspiration, yeah. bruh. Yo, why I miss this guy, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No consensus well, with guys, man. These guys are friendly guys. These guys are clowns, man. They make you laugh, man. Those guys don't sleep, yeah. man. It's like, it, it's like when you take a picture, even though they are not there, you need to make sure you are on point. Because if there is something wrong with those guys, they'll take that picture on the group and you'll be the topic of discussion the whole day, man. So they are like a family, man. Those guys, those guys are like brothers, man. Now the attention is all on us now. People are not even doing business anymore. <laughs> The group makes its way to the North Street Market. Secondhand clothing imported in bulk from Europe is sold here. In the hands of the Afro dandies, discarded fashion from the West is given a new and different life. And for someone with Lou's keen eye, the market is a treasure trove. The typical Saturday, vintage thrifting, so this is where we normally get our stuff. The nice thing is they are limited because they are imported from uh, Italy, Japan, so it's limited. When you have something from here, you're the only one who have it, so it's limited edition. The thing is, you have to dig. If you want the right ones, you need to dig. Okay, this definitely I'm taking. How much? I'm taking it, bro. It was waiting for you, bro. <laughs> I'm taking it. Too nice. Too nice. Really nice. But I want everything. I don't even have the cash. I want everything. Look at this fame. As often happens, Lou comes across a great bargain, this time in the form of a fur coat. This is quality stuff. So it's we're looking at seven US. I'm taking it. When I go to PT in January, this is the one I'll be wearing there. This is your change? Yeah, thank Shop. you. Yeah. So cheap. As it is here, cheap. Go ahead. Because people don't have money. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we show yeah. here. Yeah. People don't have money. Thank you. Shop. Thank you. Shop. Let's go. Shop. Shop. Hola, hola, James. Hola, James. Hola, James. Hola, James. It's too much now. It's too it's much. much. Ah. And you're going to tailor it, no? Yeah. You see? Yeah. Like, like this, I don't know if you can tailor this, for example. Why don't we all stand there and then the camera a line in a line and then you zoom with the camera like this? Hashtag Afro meeting. Hashtag Look at that trench coat. Ah. Yo. Yeah. Ah, 
Lux means a lot to me because he's the guy who inspired a lot of us here. He's, he's the guy who, who was there in the social media to show us how it's done and how should we do it. And like, I think even if maybe we're doing it, but we were hiding it. So we came out of our shells and we did it. So I think it's good now. We can inspire other people to come in and do it also. I come from a, a very poor family. Like no one works at home. So the flea market was the cheapest place for us. My friend used to tell me, it's, it's better we buy clothes rather than buying food. No one will see that we are hungry. But if you don't look good, everyone will see it. Yeah, I think you should look good all the time. It's a lovely type of yeah. suit, though. This is actually for this suit. <laughs> the guys finish off their day with a bicycle photo shoot in the trendy Mabonen district. <laughs> good, 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 good. <whistles> ah, don't bump me, bro. This is what we need. Champagne glasses, maybe three, and wine glasses, maybe another three. We are the Before he returns to Namibia, so, Lou's friends come to see him at his hotel. He arranges what is for many of them a rare treat. Yo! Yeah, if we're not busy working, it's not an everyday thing. <laughs> <laughs> the men of Timbers. We're a clan of black brothers, totally scattered around Africa. And whenever we come together, you see our tribe. Through clothing, I can drive a message that reminds you of who you really are. You know, that connects you to someone that you had forgotten. Some old man I met randomly, you know, I was dressed in a beautiful trench coat. And when I saw him dressed in the same trench coat, the same imagine that, yes, <laughs> we're two walls apart, and he's dressed in a similar trench coat as me. I think that's what clothing means to me. It's, it's, a, it's a thread through time, through time, yes. It's a thread. You know, our parents were attendees, you know, our elders were attendees. Mm. Saying to be African, you have to wear African trendy, it's a stereotype. You know, it's zero type that needs to be broken. The people have the view that we have a co colonial mentality by wearing suits. Even the, the African print that they think is so, like, deco a decolonized fashion is actually, it's actually made in the Netherlands. It evolved from the Netherlands. And it's just a way of looking at Africa that's, that's it's still problematic. I wish this thing could grow, become even more. Yeah. Afro dandies coming together. That's, that's, that's how I feel about it. That's what it is to me. I'm trying to reach out Back at home, I have a market every month. It's called Gwandabele Fishing Market. So I try to inspire most people from my hood because I, I know people from my hood, they don't think it's possible. I'm not getting it, hopefully. <laughs> there is a huge growth from the dandies. It can become even a bigger thing, you know what I mean? Even like it's possible for us to, to have our own African pizza. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we need to get sponsors, but we need to speak to some, companies. Yeah. But yeah. we can also do content production for them. Networking is... I think it's very important. Your network is your network, they say. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's you saw the videos we loaded yesterday with the ties. Yes, people are doing the same now. Really? Same videos now. Inspiration. Inspiration, yeah. Inspiration. Back in Vintuk, Lou has spent two weeks finishing work duties, and it is now his last day before leaving for pity. He is getting ready to head into town to take care of some final details. Yeah, I'm looking good today. Yeah, I can feel myself inside. <laughs> what I've noticed is people are always afraid to try out things. They are insecure of what people will say. You don't need to focus on that. Focus on yourself and say, this is what my heart wants to wear, and I'm going to wear it. 
Are you there? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Hold up. Okay. I'm good to go. Another productive day. Show my guy. First, he purchases some cigars. Then he visits his favorite hat shop. And lastly, he pops into work to drop the employee tax documents he has been working on. The hype of Italy has started. Instagram, Facebook, people are posting. Going to the Olympics of fashion. Lou's personal tailor, who happens to be his uncle, Alfos, has refitted his outfits for pity. Uncle Alfos is the best. He knows what the Asians are wearing, he knows what the Italians are wearing, he knows what I like. And when I come for fitting, perfect, perfect, perfect. How beautiful is this? All of the suits that I'm going to wear in Italy were tailored in this workshop. I'm ready. PTO 92. I'm coming. <laughs> Lou's friends give him a final send-off before he leaves. I took this suit. Although I'm not wearing a tie, I just decided to go simple today. Guys! Dendi lifestyle here. It's all about dandy lifestyle. Oh, nah, 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 nah. you feeling this one, eh? Oh, nah. <laughs> and finally, the big day has arrived. Um, PT is for four days. Every day you need to wear something different because there's a lot of photographers, you're networking with people, you can't be wearing the same okay. stuff. We're talking of the world's outreach. biggest stylists that are coming there, you know. My PT, day one outreach, is pencil stripe with a red knitted tie. PT day two, look at this summer suit. PT day three, vintage suit, very, very stylish, patch pocket, the design, amazing. Going to kill them. It's trouble. PT day four is actually one of my favorite outfits. I like double breast blazers. I'm gonna wait for this red pants. I remember what my grandparents, my late dad, what they told me. And wherever they are, they're looking, they're looking at me and I need to leave that legacy that my ancestors have left behind. The continuation of wearing sartorial suits is gonna continue until I die. Yeah, I'll miss you, bro. Like, seriously, ne? Oh, oh, serious God. note, I'll miss you. Man. Yeah, you must keep well and behave. Yeah, man. I'll miss your bullying and all that. <laughs> eh? You see, these so, are the true friends. Yeah, for this one? What about that one? Uh-uh, okay. don't come here with, <laughs> with good ideas to make me happy because you want to take my stuff. It's not going away. <laughs> Leave my watch. I'll miss you, man. Thank you. <laughs> ah, you know me. Yeah, I know, you are a man of the way. Passport. Yeah. Everything on par. Everything on par. Lou leaves for pity, and before long, his pictures from there are spreading amongst his thousands of followers around the world. He meets colleagues, friends, and mentors. Lou has made a mark for Africa at Pity, and soon he will return to Namibia filled with even more confidence and inspiration to spread the Afro-Bandy mission as widely as possible. Mm -hmm.